Oh, uh, hello, everyone. Um, let's toss to the good health of the President of the Republic of Uganda. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda. Okay, then the four way test by Derek. All right, um, thank you so much, uh, President. So, the four way test um, of the things we think, say, or do. First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you very much, Derek. I see Sherry isn't online. I'm going to ask one of our visiting water actors, past ADRR, Emmanuel Lucera, to kindly take us through the goals of water. Thank you, President Keith. Uh, the goals of Rotary Act are five. First is to develop professional and leadership skills. The second goal is to emphasize respect for the rights of others and promote ethical standards and the dignity of all useful occupations. The third goal is to provide young people, like many of us on this call, to with an opportunity to address the needs and concerns, first of the community that we live in and later the rest of the world. The fourth goal encourages us to work in cooperation with our sponsoring Rotary Clubs that we sometimes call Mother Clubs. And the fifth goal is that when we are finally ready, we join Rotary. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Emma. Um, so we'll move on to the next bit of fellowship. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, I'd like to recognize the presence of uh, members from our mother club. I've seen um, IPP Peter Mukuru is around. Um, Dr. Richard Kalunji is there. Uh, who else do I see here? There's quite a few. Um, yes, Mr. Charles Odaga, PE, I believe. Charles Odaga is also here. Um, thank you very much. Um, the Rotarians from Mother Club that have joined us, another Rotaractors. I won't mention everybody, but I'd just like to say thank you to all of you that have joined us today. Um, I will ask who is there? I'll ask Angela, our Club Service Director, to be our Sergeant of Arms today. Kindly, Angela, make sure you watch out for those people who've got their mics open. We need some mobile money sent to us. And then again, Angela, I'll also ask you to take us through the CV for our guest speaker for the day. I believe he's already online. Um, thank you, President. Our oh, speaker today Angela, is... Angela, hold on. Hold on. Um, before, before, before that, um, for everyone that has joined us, kindly register yourselves on the chat group. Um, we'll take note of those people, especially our guests. Please make sure that you register your names so that we'll, be, we'll try and read them at the end of the fellowship. Thank you very much. Angela, please continue. Thank you, President. Good evening, everyone. Our speaker today is the DRRE, and his work experience is as follows. His CV is as follows. Work. He's, he worked at Tech Clean Leader, that's Blue Cube Limited and Galaxy FM Tech Support from April 2016 to date. Then Chief Tech Ninja and Co-Founder at Django Tech Limited from 2017 to date. Then he's a former English news anchor at Galaxy FM Limited. He's a co-creator stroke tech lead in brackets, the Bala, still in the works. Then Rotaract background, he joined Rotaract Club of NASA and information in late August 2013 on invitation by Rotarian Dennis Ngavirano, that's Rotary Nansana. He served as the inaugural community service director that's in the Rotary year 2013 to stroke 2014. 
Then he's a vice president, stroke president elect 2014, stroke 2015. He's president 2015, stroke 2016. That's be a gift to the world. Then he's IPP stroke club trainer, stroke district fundraising chair in the year 2016, 2017. That's first test of district leadership under DRR Mapande. Then his ADRR Central Zone 3, 2017 stroke 2018 under DRR Amina, served on the Roads Committee, served on the District Strategic Planning Committee chaired by PDRR Hudson and helped set up the Ugandan side of District Club Runner. Then Country Professional Leadership Development Chair 2018 stroke 2019 under DRR Mombeki. Um, then country chair of Tarak Ugandan, 2019-2020 under DRR Jacob, invited to join the Rotary Vijana Power Board, join the Rotary Act Initiative by a virtual position, CC subs on the board for two years. His DRRE, Rotary International District 9214. Then his hobbies, playing video games, reading books, watching sitcoms, listening to 60s and 70s music and classical music and all the rest, etc. Then values, family, honesty, diligence, perseverance. He believes in using love to solve differences. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome, I introduce to you the DRRE for today. Thank you very much, um, Angela. I think you've actually done it really well. I'd like to ask everybody to make sure your mics are muted as we listen to our DRRE, Noah Nyobana. Noah, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, President Keith, for inviting me here today. Uh, before I proceed, I'd like to know whether I'm actually audible. President Keith, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. All right. I, I believe you speak for everyone when you say you can hear me. Thank you very much once again for inviting me here. I'm quite delighted to be sharing about teamwork. It is, as you have seen from my CV, something that I practice almost on a daily basis. I've been a team leader uh, in my professional life uh, for quite some time now. And uh, teamwork is has been at the at the heart uh, of the success of many of the projects we have undertaken, as well as uh, uh, in my leadership endeavor. So I'm really really delighted to be talking about uh, lead, uh, teamwork today, and I hope that uh, I can uh, leave you with a thing or two uh, as an addition to the arsenal that you already have uh, in terms of uh, winning and uh, development. Now, uh, before I uh, give my presentation, as many of you have attended uh, most of my uh, uh, presentations know, I don't usually have a PowerPoint presentation to display to you. I, I, have, I learned this from uh, Father Chi, the time when he visited the Rotaract Club of Kampala South when I was the ADRR, where he said that it was important uh, for uh, you to actually listen to a person talking, more important than to you uh, than you reading what is being displayed because uh, it usually creates a bit of confusion when you have to read and listen to the person speaking. However, today I'm gonna have a, a small twist in the way I'm going to handle this, uh, in that I am going to uh, start this of this presentation with a small video. I hope that you do indeed uh, enjoy this video and maybe learn a thing or two that will help us in today's discussion. So I'm going to share my screen. Ah, I would request that uh, Derek allows me to share my screen. Noah, please, please go ahead, uh, permission granted. Ah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Uh, okay. Means, let me share my screen here so that I can show you what I want to show you. Share computer sound, wonderful. Okay, 
Okay, here is a video. <laughs> Smarter to travel in groups. So uh, from uh, what I, I have uh, shared here, it serves to show the unity that is in strength, the unity, sorry, the strength that is in unity and uh, the power of uh, working as a team. And that will be the basis of today's uh, sharing as far as teamwork is concerned. Now teamwork could very easily mean a set of thoughts, uh, actions, or feelings of each team member that are needed. Uh, in order for you to function as a team. And uh, this would then result in value added outcomes. And uh, I hope that at the end of this presentation, I will have preached enough about the gospel of one team, one goal, and have it inculcated in your minds. And there's no doubt that effective teamwork is uh, an important ingredient of team performance. So I'm going to share uh, some components that I believe are a components of effective teamwork that I have come across over the years uh, in my uh, stints as a motor act as well as in my professional life. Um, one of them is competence, and uh, this refers to the knowledge, skills, uh, and abilities each team possesses on an individual and uh, collective level. And as an individual on the team, uh, you need to take time to self-reflect understand your weaknesses, invest in your strengths, and leverage your talents towards the success of the team. So basically you do a bit of like a personal SWOT analysis. And then as a team leader, uh, it is imperative uh, that you understand the strengths of each team member, uh, place them in positions to be successful, and they clearly communicate their role within the team so that there is consistent understanding of division of labor. And when I talk about a team leader, I'm not uh, only talking about a president, I'm talking about a president, I'm talking about uh, a, a committee chair, I'm talking about uh, an ADRR, because an ADR is a team leader of a zone. So when I talk about a team leader, I talk about the different leadership roles that we have uh, in Rotaract. The other component of effective teamwork I would think of is uh, coordination. And, so, and uh, it's one of the most you know, important factors in effective teamwork, where the individual skills of each team member are used for the team to run effectively. This has in it hidden uh, the principle of division of labor for effective results. The other component of uh, effective teamwork I would uh, bring to the table is collaboration. And uh, this is particularly concerned with having the right attitude about teamwork so that there is more focus uh, on us. Us by us, I'm saying US, eh? don't have other thoughts, rather than I. If, if the team has a collaborative mindset, it will maximize the opportunity for success. I'm sure this is evidence-based and you know this. And uh, here, I'm going to share with you some of the reflective thought strategies uh, to gauge how collaborative you are as a member of a team. So please listen carefully to this, uh, this exercise that will help you uh, gauge how collaborative you are as an individual 
in a team. You might want to write them down. There are very few, just uh, four questions that you're going to ask yourself uh, time and again. One is, are you willing to work with others with an open mind to new ideas and approaches? That is, are you willing to work with others with an open mind to new ideas and approaches? These answers you will have to give to yourself. The second um, exercise you want to do is, the second question you want to ask yourself in this exercise is, do you know and trust members of your team? How well do you know them? So do you know and trust members of your team? The third question you're going to want to ask yourself is, are you aware of each team member's role and the benefit they bring to the success of a team? That is, are you aware of each team member's role and the benefit they bring toward the success of a team? And the final question you're going to want to ask yourself in this exercise is, are you willing to help a struggling member of a team for the success of the team? That is, are you willing to help a struggling team member for the sake of success of your team? So with this exercise, you're going to practice being an individual leader in these areas and the rest will follow. So that is it about, that, that, it, that, that is it about collaboration as a principle of uh, effective teamwork. Then the other principle you want to look at is communication, or I would say effective communication, feedback loops and the likes. And this will be at the very heart of an effective team. And communication involves both internal, that is intra-team communication, and external. Uh, outside of your team, outside of your club, outside of the district team, outside of uh, your club subcommittee, you know, outside of the district subcommittee, you know, outside of your zone, inside of the zone, inside of the committee, inside of the club. So communication at the different uh, levels of leadership uh, is, is, is an, an integral and uh, important uh, principle of effective teamwork. Now you saw in the video that I shared, uh, Ants were calling each other with whistles. Okay, that's not true. Ants don't call each other with whistles. Ants, uh, although we all know that ants are some of the most organized species of life, and uh, they communicate, just that they don't communicate with whistles, but rather they communicate using chemicals. And uh, it is effective for them. They use this to uh, let other ants know uh, where food can be found, let other ants know that they need to come together and protect each other. Of course, as humans, uh, it, it might be, uh, difficult for us to um, define a chemical language in a team environment because of our inherent differences as individuals and uh, of course with the advent of technology, we're not going to go around, you know, spitting uh, chemicals around to communicate, but we could define clear standards and processes that our clubs, that our committees, that our teams, the small, smaller teams in, in Rotaract and the larger teams uh, are going to follow as a way of, uh, active, of, of effective communication. And uh, some of these you know, principles that we'll put together, some of these uh, standards and principles we put together for effective communication uh, could be encouraging in person meetings. We know that, uh, yes, the new normal has called for uh, virtual meetings, but as we progress, you know, as, as, we, as, as, we, as we return to normalcy, we might want, there's, there is a huge benefit in meeting in person uh, when you can, because when I was studying communication skills in, uh, in my first year at the university, uh, we were told about nonverbal cues and how important they are in communication. Uh, the, 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 the body language, you know, that the person you're communicating with uh, it makes is very important in, in effectiveness of communication because right now you're as if listening to a robot but if you're looking at me and looking at my body language and the, and the non-verbal cues that i'm giving then the communication will be more effective and uh one of the other you know uh, principles you want to put forth uh, for effective communication would be being open-minded i talked about it earlier you know uh, practice positive intent uh, practice active listening practice empathy like I said, uh, as human beings, we're inherently different. And empathy, you know, would go a long way to improve effective communication. Um, 
another way of you know building cohesion and 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 and, and, and creating uh, comfortable communication channels is to get the team together to get club members together or to get a committee member uh, committee members together to get your body group members together or you know whatever team it is you're dealing with together for events outside of official water duty go for a happy hour go for zip lining go visit a national park go and do fun things together so that you create that kind of uh, togetherness that kind of brotherhood um that that would now enable communication to be much easier you know when you understand someone at a more personal level it is easier for you to communicate with them so basically defining a chemical language specific to your club may help calm existing communication challenges that your club or your committee or your body group might have and what best practices will you define as part of your club's communication culture as part of your body group's communication culture i'll leave that question up to you uh, your answer to this will be your solution to effective communication as part uh, of um, effective teamwork and now these principles these next two principles are going to be directed directly to the leaders the team leaders that is the presidents that is the committee chairs that is the uh, the club committee chairs and district committee chairs that is um uh, body group leaders you know are members of a board if i could put it that way of your club this principle of conflict resolution is also an integral part of effective teamwork and the fact is that internal conflict will always arise no matter how cohesive the team is or looks to be however the good news is when managed correctly conflicts can be used uh, as a channeling mechanism to encourage growth and innovation and i'm going to share with you some tips that will help you to effectively and successfully manage conflict you need to have an alignment on team processes and standards to endure operational consistency as leaders it is imperative that you encourage facts best decision making so as to do away with emotion and personal attachment to decisions that are being made we need like i said at the beginning of this communication we need to remove the i from the equation not talking about the i for sight I'm talking about I, we need to always have us winning over I. And in the event that there is a misunderstanding or conflict, as leaders, it is desirable that we provide real-time feedback addressing issues up front instead of allowing resentment to build. So if any of the team members have a misunderstanding or conflict arises between a couple of members as leaders and, and as you know as leaders are supposed to be impartial take no sides listen actively and be the mediators in the times of conflict but it is important that this is addressed as fast as possible so that all misunderstandings are done away with as opposed to waiting it out and allowing resentment to build. The other principle of effective teamwork is support. Building a strong team culture takes patience and discipline. And the principles I have shared with you can help lay a solid foundation. But to tie it all together, the final principle that is support is required. Therefore, as a leader, whether president, committee chair, ADRR, body group leader, ask yourself this question. What is my role in supporting that team? Remember, it takes only one person to make a difference. So your answer to this question will address the issue of support as far as effective teamwork is concerned. <clears throat> 
Now I would like to uh, end this uh, uh, sharing with uh, a recap of the takeaways uh, for this uh, piece of communication. You know, I have since learned from Rotary and Irina. Rotary and Irina is a Rotary from the Rotary Club of Kampala Metropolitan. She is uh, uh, a colleague of mine at Jambo Tech Limited. She's our Chief of Operations. But I've learned from her a couple of things, and one of the things I've learned is that it is always imperative to give take home points, you know, and here's my package for you. Uh, if you, if by any chance you came in late or at some point you fell off, uh, this is the summary of what I've been sharing about today as far as effective teamwork is concerned. So use this principle that I'm going to share with you as a guide to help create a support system for a strong team culture in your club, if you are the president or the leader of a club, in your committee, if you're a committee chair, in your body group, if you're a body group leader, in your zone, if you're an ADR, and so on and so forth. Have, number one, have a clear division of labor and role definition within your team. Number two, Align on us. Number five develop a support system through patience and discipline. Ladies and gentlemen, President Keith's grand uncle, also known as Henry Ford, said that coming together is a beginning, keeping together is a progress, working together is indeed success. Thank you very much. Unity is strength. Well, thank you very much, um, DRR E. Noah, uh, I personally have actually gained quite a lot from this. Um, I know this, I, I've been informed that the meeting is roughly about 40 minutes, but um, kindly forgive us. Just in case you're logged out, you can always log back in using the link. Um, uh, where is that? Okay, so I will take any questions that anyone will have. Um, please make it as brief as possible. Your, if you have a question, you can also put it in the chat group, um, or you can mute, you can unmute your mic and um, present your question. Any questions for our DRRE? Unless if everybody says they actually understood this topic. Okay, I'll just, we'll go with the question for me. Um, no, oh, oh, I see Janet. Janet, please unmute your mic. Mm. Yeah, um, thank you, President Keith. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so my question was, um, what happens uh, in scenarios where, okay, um, I wouldn't say slow, but uh, you know how sometimes uh, some people work fast, others work really slow, and then you're trying to um, work together something, or maybe you have a deadline, you need something that you want to do, but then you feel like you're kind of laid back because someone is really taking their time or they're maybe being so like, what do you do about it? <sighs> That's my question. I don't know if it's clear. Okay, thank you very much, President Janet. Um, Noah, we also have another question in the chat group. 
at what point does a misunderstanding become a problem to the entire club? I think then my question is on um, on active listening. I I personally have have actually experienced this particular bit as up until the point where I became a leader. How 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 can one or how does a leader or somebody do this bit on active listening? No. Thank you very much, uh, President Keith, and uh, all the rest who have asked your questions. This is uh, um, to show that people have been listening. All right, um, I'll begin with uh, President Janet's question. What happens in scenarios where some people are slow, people are taking their time, I want to believe that um, probably a couple of us who have held leadership positions have experienced a thing like this uh, once or twice or more than twice in our, our careers. Now, um, when I was thinks that Janet is not, um, is being slow. However, the, this being slow is not deliberate. It's based on the fact that the underlying problem is that she doesn't have the confidence to actually execute, uh, to actually come up with this budget. So it goes back to the question I asked uh, uh, when it came to collaboration. Are you willing to help a struggling team member for the success of the team? Now, this is where this question comes in. The team members who have got the competence to actually execute uh, this beat would then jump in, help this person who is apparently slow, learn how to do their duty, and help them execute the duty so that the team can move forward. As you know that the weakest link in every chain, sorry, as you know that the strength of every chain is, as, is, is, is dependent on the weakest link in the chain. So a chain is as strong as its weakest link. But if you all work together and help this seemingly slow team member to actually pick up and be able to execute their duty, I think uh, this would, one, help the club, achieve the goals of Rotaract because as I, I had a conversation with Rotary in the morning where I told them that while Rotary might seek to have the affluent uh, accomplished or people or, uh, who are on the path of accomplishment, Rotaract takes in the role and refines them. So your club will have achieved that role of helping this person to be refined, to become better. And then your weak link will be, have been strengthened and then your club will be able to move forward and your team we we'll gain its strength again. I hope I have answered uh, that question, President Janet. And if I haven't answered it very well, you can go ahead and tell me and uh, where you think I have not answered it uh, quite well. Uh, there was a, a question that I think was put in the chat. At what point does, uh, ooh, I am looking for this question. At what point does a misunderstanding <clears throat> at what point at what point does a misunderstanding become a problem to the entire club? And this was asked by President Okri. Um, I have seen this happen in a couple of uh, clubs where uh, probably two individuals uh, have an, a misunderstanding and uh, the leadership uh, doesn't take the time to come to the bottom of this understanding and try to solve it. Like I told you earlier, uh, as leaders in a club, when misunderstandings or conflicts arise, uh, 
it is the, the onus the onus is on the leadership uh to resolve these conflicts and, and this um would involve even things that are very uncomfortable things as uncomfortable as bringing the parties in conflict together and trying to understand uh, the basis of their conflict now um when leaders are not impartial and they are not using evidence uh based or fact based decision making as far as resolving these conflicts is concerned then these conflicts are bound to grow uh into animosity because see, not all conflicts result in resentment but if they're not handled well they will end up resulting into resentments uh, creating some sort of animosity and as we know that rotaract uh, just like rotary is uh, mostly by invitation because some people will learn about a club and come but most of the time it's through invitation i know someone who is uh, of uh, rotaract age i invite them to join my club and, and then if i have invited a member to my club and general okui has invited other members in the club and we are members of the same club and there's a conflict between Genoki and I and the leadership doesn't take time to resolve this conflict for the good of the club in time and then resentment follows naturally as humans we tend to have sides and then we take sides so my friends will take my side general quiz friends will take his side and then we'll create some sort of rift in the club there will be team na team nyabwana and team okwi and this is when it becomes now a problem for the entire club so um here my advice and this is usually to the leadership of a club is that when conflicts arise and you see them arising and you will see them arising more than half the time when there's a conflict you tell it mr president yeah but probably this part of business and then it comes to you uh, be quick to solve this problem don't be quick to judge listen to both sides even do something as uncomfortable as bringing them together to try and understand their conflict and like i said to do it from a position of love you know love conquers all so don't show them that don't take sides and um it will show if you're taking sides from the way you know you question them or from the way Uh, you listen to them it will show if you take a side so don't take a side be impartial be the leader be the mature one bring them together otherwise uh, if that doesn't happen and animosity grows resentment grows then it is bound to affect the club uh, and finally president kif or also known as president neighbor your question uh, was how can one do active listening I am going to um let me first uh, make this statement before I bring in my analogy. Um the difference between active listening and the one that's not active what I would call passive uh, or inactive um is when I'm doing active listening. I'm listening to you with the intent to understand what you're saying and if it did it, if it does indeed need me to respond to you then I'll think through what the response should be I will understand your position and respond to you based on my understanding of your position the other form of listening is where i listen to respond so i will block out everything else and only pick out those points i want to respond to and probably this i will do when i want to put you down and that kind of listening is uh is quite ineffective and it usually leads to conflicts the example i want to bring in is the example of our personal relationships um maybe a boyfriend girlfriend fiance fiance uh, husband wife uh we have been 
on the receiving end of this as, as the male species, we are very poor active listeners. When uh, our female counterparts are talking, we tend to pick out only that which one is uh, to pick out. And this usually results in conflicts. And this you will notice uh, in many uh, relationships where active listening is not involved. And this spans across all forms of relationship, romantic, uh, teamwork like here, or uh, professional relationships. If you do not listen with the intent to understand the position of the conveyor of the piece of communication, then you are not actively listening. And more than half the time, this will bring some kind of conflict because you have not understood uh, what the, the position of the conveyor of the message. Uh, and as a result, that piece of communication was at no point ever effective. I, I hope I have, I have done your question enough, Justice President Neighbor. Thank you very much. President Neighbor, I think you're muted. Uh, I submit. Thank you very much, dear E neighbor. Um, like I was saying earlier, I found I, I, I've actually been at the receiving end of the active listening bit and do struggle sometimes between active and passive listening. But um, of some of the few leadership books that I've read have actually taught me to be more of an active listener and when required, be a passive listener, especially when dealing with with, uh, with teams that have people of different characters and backgrounds. So I'd like to thank you for answering that question very well. Um, I don't know if we have any other, if we have any other questions. Uh, I see somebody says they will inbox you. I wonder what that's about. But um, yes, I, I see our past president, Tom, has said something. President, could a I ask a question? Yes, please. Yes, oh, Rotarian yeah, Richard. My hand was. My I apologize. My hand was up, and uh, I see that uh, DRRE Noah has tried to answer my question before I asked it, but I could still go ahead. Uh, thank you, Noah, for the very beautiful presentation. My question is uh, in terms of teamwork or effective teamwork, at what point do you really realize that this person can no longer be part of our team? Are there, is there room for or chasing people out of a room, sorry, out of a, a team, or reallocating them to another team, or totally mm -hmm. getting rid of them. Uh, I don't know what your comment would be on that. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you very much, uh, Rotarian Kalunji, for that question. And that is indeed uh, a serious people. Um, When I was responding to President Janet about uh, the team member who is slow or seemingly slow and slowing down the team, the weak link in the chain, um, you're not always 100% uh, uh, successful as far as trying to help someone become better is concerned. You will find that uh, you have guiding principles uh, for your team, for effectiveness of your team. Uh, I think I talked about this. Uh, you have uh, probably uh, principles based on um, uh, com commitment because you want your team members to be committed to the cause. You have principles uh, to do with uh, maybe the ethics. And if I go in the um, uh, Rotary Act, say Rotary Act, Rotary, we have you know the four way test and we have. Um, that as our ethical code of uh, conduct. Uh, so it's we have a set of principles uh, that uh, I've had a bit of internet interruption. Can, can I be heard? 
Um, yes, you are. You 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 can be heard, but uh, it's breaking just a little bit. Yeah, uh, I have internet corner um, issue here, but I think it's solved uh, now. In it, like I was saying, you have a set of guiding principles for your team or for your club um, that if a member of a team uh, constantly violates, then you, you might be forced to let them go. Yeah. Um, Yes, I know that uh, Rotaract is there to help us, you know, uh, to refine us, to, ref to get gets in the youth and then refines them to make them um, better members of society, uh, makes them change makers in society, makes them leaders in society. And it's, ne it's not a 100% guarantee that everyone who comes in uh, will indeed be refined, will be made into a change maker, will be made into a leader in society. And, and sometimes you notice that, you know, you have set your goals as a club or as a committee or as a body group or as anything in the club or in, 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 in the district. And you've set timelines. You know, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have uh, certain things that you don't go below. So in as much as yes, we want to help everyone come together and we all move together at the same pace, uh, sometimes you realize that, okay, um, Nyabwana cannot handle our books. For the, past, for the first quarter, we have really done poorly in as far as accounting is concerned. He is a very good member of the club. But as far as being a part of this team uh, that is accounting, no, 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 he won't work. And there's nothing wrong with pivoting bring in someone who is probably better and say now this one you know you can reallocate if, if the person is indeed uh, working within the principles that your club set forth they are committed they, they are ethical and they tick all the other you know principles that your organization your club your team or your body group has set forth then you, you don't let them go you, re, you reassign them however if they violate the guiding principles of your club, of your committee, uh, then using facts best making, you let them go. Yeah, I think when you realize that they are falling yeah, below the guiding principles, and uh, and as a result, they are slowing down the team, or they are killing the morale of the team. There's also killing the morale of the team. It is very important. One person, one bad egg, one bad tomato can kill the morale of the team. So at that point, of course, based on facts, you let them go. It is, might, might be sad and hard to do, but a time like that uh, will once in a while come when you have let a team member go. I submit. Uh, thank you very much, um, Noah. We, uh, I think, President Janet has a um, has a question. If you'd like to clarify her question, President Janet, the floor is yours. Mm, thank you, Kit. Um, okay, I don't know if I'll explain very well my question, but um, it wasn't uh, in relation to slow learner. Like, let me say, um, a person on the team is fully equipped. You have the necessary training, the skills that you need. You even know what you have to do. Basically, you have every info that you need. You know the deadlines. You have um, the necessary support and help. Like, everything is fully available to you. But then um, maybe because, uh, I don't know, you think... Uh, maybe not thinking, but believe like uh, they have to count on only you to do this or maybe, I, do, I don't really understand my entire thing, but then uh, you really take your time and then uh, you ignore the deadlines and uh, this whole pressure that is going on. So what do you do? Because um, you really want to have this person on team for what they bring in, but then you don't know how to handle that kind of um, 
situation, how do you deal with it? Hmm? I don't okay, know if that's um, clear before enough. You, before you mute your microphone, uh, hmm. I, I want to understand this. I think it has to do with the person not being committed to executing their duties. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are not, but they would take so it, their generally, time. Generally, because if they are competent and they mm. have the support they need to uh, execute their duties and they are being slow, maybe my thinking is that they are not committed. And uh, this would bring me to where I said that, you know, as a club, using your example, you have a set of guiding principles and I think commitment should be one of the guiding principles, especially to do with uh, the leadership team in your club. Then um, using facts-based decision-making, if someone is not committed uh, to executing their duties, regardless of the fact that they have the competence and all the support they need, I would think that that particular kind of behavior would in one way or another at one point result in killing morale of that team. And uh, I would like to let you know that there is no one in this world who is indispensable. So when someone is not committed to executing their duty, you can reassign another person to take on that duty for the good of the team for the good or the strength of the team. The fact is nobody is indispensable and everyone's job, uh, you will always almost find someone who can do that or even do better. It's just a matter of giving another person an opportunity to do it. Um, but also you might want to find out what the root cause of their lack of commitment is. Maybe they don't see the benefit in being that committed to doing their role. And I think the last time I had a training at your club, I mentioned the fact that uh, when we are given positions of leadership in clubs or at the district level, we are given terms of reference, which state, do this, do this, do that, do this, do this, do this, do that. However, if as leaders, we could spice up those terms of reference with highlighting personal benefits that come with executing your duties. For example, if we say that if you execute the duty of a treasurer, these are the life skills you're going to learn that will help you much later in life or now if you're a business owner in understanding how these things work. Maybe it would raise my commitment. I'd be like, I'm learning a life skill. Like I keep telling my family that to me, Rotaract is leadership apprenticeship. Uh, yes, I execute my roles, but I know that I'm learning life skills that I'll need probably in the near future. So maybe we need to spice up a little uh, how we, you know, um, list the benefits that uh, these team members will uh, gain in being competent, you know, committed to executing their duties. I don't know, um, President Janet, I want to think that <clears throat> this is something to do with <clears throat> commitment or its lack of thereof. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, President Janet, I believe, or I hope that your question has actually been answered. Um, uh, I'd like to say thank you to Noah. I'm going to ask Claire Muhindo to give a vote of thanks. Claire, please unmute your mic. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, hi. Thank you so much, Noah, for this wonderful talk. I must admit, I'm really inspired a lot by most of the things that you've said. I think it's a lot for us young people to pick from about, you know, a lot of stuff. So I hope everyone has a take home from this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Claire. Um, that's the reason why I actually selected you because I saw a comment you put in the group in the chat. Um, 
Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our fellowship. I'd like to say thank you to all of you that have joined us, and uh, thank you to my neighbor, um, Noah Nyawana, for actually, you know, allowing our in or accepting our invitation to join us and come and speak to the club today. Um, I'd like to request Angela, our club service director and uh, sergeant for the night, to come through and give us the statistics. Sorry, hold on before we do that. Okay, um, Angela, please come through and give us the statistics. And uh, yeah, you can do the sergeant as well. Thank you. Thank you, President. We've had um, for the visiting clubs. Thanks for the thanks to everyone that has managed to visit us today. We've had one Rotary club that has visited, and that's Kampala South. And we've had um, 16 Rotaract clubs that have visited us, and that's Makere University, Mengo, Chibuli, Boyege, Renambole, Kampala City, Kololo, Kampala Central, Bukoto, Mbarara, Naguru, Mulago Nansing, Cape Munyonyo, Rubaga, Chinawataka, Kampala Impala, and Bugolobi. Then also, we've had some guests that would want to visit us. We recognize, um, um, just a minute. Um, the guests we've had, Isaac, Solomon, Christine, Collins, Onobia, and Mohire. Thanks for joining us. Then for the Bader groups, the statistics, We've had um, Nike at 58%, Adidas at 68%, Fila at 61%, and Puma at 55%. Okay, thank you very much, Angela. Thank you, um, thank you very much to everyone that has joined us today. I hope the um, the topic has been informative to all of you, and um, I uh, I hope that you, each and every one of you has actually picked something from this. I am going to make a very small request of everybody, um, just for our YouTube channel. Could you kindly, each and every one of you, kindly turn on your cameras so that we can take a screenshot? Um, our PR director would like to take a screenshot for our YouTube channel, and you can see this meeting later on on the YouTube channel. Thank you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, nice, I see. Okay, uh, Blair, is everybody's um, video sharing on? So is a bit like the camera. Uh, President, I see enough videos on. Okay, um, I think perfect. In a few seconds, we're good. Okay, guys, can you um, can you just give us a big smile? We're gonna take a screenshot of this. Okay. So hold on. Um, I'm going to ask. Uh, who's there? Yes, I. Sorry, President Janet. Um, I'm going to ask the President Janet to kindly give us the vote of thanks, and we can all say it together. If you're able to, you can. The unmute final toast, then, right? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, final toast. Thanks, um, President Keith. Um, for uh, the informative and insightful um, fellowship talk from the DRE that we've had. I would like to toast to Rotary International. Rotary, 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 Rotary. Rotary.